Hello. My name is Mark Barden. Just four months ago, my wife Jackie and I lost our son. And our children, James and Natalie, they lost their little brother, Daniel. Daniel was a first grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School. Our sweet seven-year-old Daniel was one of 20 children, six adults lost on December 14th. And I have to say, it feels like it was just yesterday. In our deepest grief, we were supported by the love of our families and comforted by the love and prayers we received from millions of America from every corner of the country. What happened in Newtown can happen anywhere. In any instant, any dad in America could be in my shoes. No one should feel the pain. No one should feel our pain or the pain felt by the tens of thousands of people who've lost loved ones to senseless gun violence. And that's why we're here. Two weeks ago, 12 of us from Newtown came to meet with U.S. Senators and have a conversation about how to bring common sense solutions to the issues of gun violence. We came with a sense of hope, optimistic that real conversation could begin that would ultimately save the lives of so many Americans. We met with dozens of Democrats and Republicans and shared with them pictures of our children, our spouses, our parents who lost their lives on December 14th. Expanded background checks wouldn't have saved our loved ones, but still we came to support a bipartisan proposal from two senators, both with A ratings from the NRA. A common sense proposal supported by 90% of Americans. It's a proposal that will save lives without interfering with the rights of responsible, law-abiding gun owners. We'll return home now, disappointed but not defeated. We return home with a determination that change will happen. Maybe not today, but it will happen. It will happen soon. We've always known this would be a long road and we don't have the luxury of turning back. We will keep moving forward and build public support for common sense solutions in the areas of mental health, school safety, and gun safety. We take strength from the children and loved ones that we lost and we carry a great faith in the American people. On behalf of the Sandy Hook Promise, I would like to thank President Obama, Vice President Biden, for their leadership and for standing strong and continuing to fight for a safer America. I would like to thank Senators Toomey, Manchin, Schumer, and Kirk for coming together to seek common ground on legislation that would keep guns out of the hands of criminals and save lives. I would like to thank Connecticut's Senators Blumenthal and Murphy. They've been right with us. They stood by us right from the very beginning. From the first few hours after this tragedy, they were with us. We will not be defeated. We are not defeated and we will not be defeated. We are here now. We will always be here because we have no other choice. We are not going away. And every day, as more people are killed in this country because of gun violence, our determination grows stronger. We leave Washington hoping that others, both here and across the country, will join us in making the Sandy Hook promise, a pledge that we had great hope that more U.S. Senators would take literally. I'd like to end by repeating the words with which the Sandy Hook promise begins. Our hearts are broken. Our spirit is not. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the President of the United States of America, Barack Obama. Good job. A few months ago, in response to too many tragedies, including the shootings of a United States Congresswoman, Gabby Gifford, who's here today, and the murder of 20 
innocent school children and their teachers. This country took up the cause of protecting more of our people from gun violence. Families that know unspeakable grief summon the courage to petition their elected leaders. Not just to honor the memory of their children, but to protect the lives of all of our children. A few minutes ago, a minority in the United States Senate decided it wasn't worth it. They blocked common sense gun reforms, even while these families looked on from the Senate gallery. By now, it's well known that 90 percent of the American people support universal background checks that make it harder for a dangerous person to buy a gun. We're talking about convicted felons, people convicted of domestic violence, people with a severe mental illness. Ninety percent of Americans support that idea. Most Americans think that's already the law. And a few minutes ago, 90 percent of Democrats in the Senate voted for that idea. But it's not going to happen, because 90 percent of Republicans in the Senate just voted against that idea. A majority of Senators voted yes to protecting more of our citizens with smarter background checks. But by this continuing distortion of Senate rules, a minority was able to block it from moving forward. Now, I'm going to speak plainly and honestly about what's happened here, because the American people are trying to figure out how can something have 90 percent support and yet not happen. We had a Democrat and a Republican, both gun owners, both fierce defenders of our Second Amendment, with A grades from the NRA, come together and work together to write a common sense.